still a terrible title for this. Dragon Ball Super Hero would have worked much better with the already Dragon Ball Super subtitle. It feels so weird to say this actual title out loud. Dragon Ball Super Superhero. Thankfully, the movie is pretty darn good. And just FYI, no spoilers for the first couple minutes. I'll give you a warning before I dive in. I think the biggest thing to note here is that the focus on Piccolo as a protagonist with Gohan as the deuteragonist is a welcome, refreshing change of pace to the series. Both of these characters get a lot of love here and that's fantastic to see. Akira Toriyama, the creator, has said that Piccolo is his favorite and his growth here, well, it's about time. And the same with Gohan. I have a couple nitpicks about the execution of said portions, but more on that later in the spoiler section. The story of this one is fun, funny, full of callbacks, and has some pretty great action. The tone is sometimes too silly for its own good in a couple key moments, and the villains are so goofy they feel like they're from a different franchise altogether. It comes together okay, and there's some really impactful moments when it comes together, but there's also some really disappointing sequences and aspects in there too. But before we get into any of that, I need to talk about this animation style. This is the first Dragon Ball film to go fully 3D CG, and I have mixed feelings. In the way overlong opening exposition with its villains, I hated how it looked. Almost cheap and uncanny, almost like a Nickelodeon show, or some of those bad anime series with the really weird looking undetailed CGI. Then when the other characters showed up, it eased back, and then the action kicked in, and I saw the possibilities. By the end, I grew accustomed to it pretty quickly, and I saw the reasoning for experimenting with it, and even liked it for some of the crucial visual moments. There's also an abundance of issues too. The action is never as hard hitting as Broly was, with the exquisite back to basics 2D hand drawn style with occasional CG. That was perfection. Also, this style makes the dubbing much harder to sync with on the mouth movements. Several times it fell way off, especially in that beginning opening section. And don't get me wrong, while it's good to see the franchise experiment and flex their animation talents across multiple styles between these last few movies, ultimately I think this style of CG animation is the wrong move for the franchise long term. It's got its perks and its moments where it's really striking, but DBZ content is the pinnacle of 2D animation and they need to largely stick with that and save CG for some big moments if they want. I hope whatever new TV series that eventually comes out does not go this route. If Berserk or One Punch Man Season 2 have taught anime fans anything, it's that CG shows have a huge budget that cannot be sustained and they require a lot more attention to detail, even if it's easier. Luckily the quality here is great for the most part, but even if there's still that uncanny valley effect to a couple characters who just don't look right such as Krillin and Whis. They just look off. Please go back to 2D. This is the wrong move long term. Overall, I'm not a fan. Credit where credit is due, since it does look great at times, and I appreciate that they tried something different. It's cool to see them experiment considering how old this franchise is at this point. And make sure you stay after the credits. Those characters also don't look right to me either, but stay after the credits, huge, huge, huge moment there. With that being said, I really liked the movie. I had a great time, smiled a lot, but now we're gonna go into the spoiler section so I can get into the nitty gritty of what I liked and what I did. This is your spoiler warning. Leave now if you don't want any spoilers. Bringing back the Red Ribbon Army gives me mixed feelings. It's nostalgic and all the callbacks really build upon the lore, but their history is very one note and lacks nuance outside of Cell. Dr. Hito is a ridiculous looking character who is hard to take seriously. In fact, most of the characters there are. The new Gamma androids are a standout though. Way stronger than I anticipated with some great character development even if it's glossed over just a little bit, but the depth of them hit me harder than I expected and I'm excited to see more of them in the future. And of course, the big thing about this movie that was kind of hyped up in some of the trailers is that Cell is making a return as Cell Max, a, kind of like a clone, a different version of him, but Cell Max has got to be the most utterly disappointing thing in the movie. A new Cell clone is reduced to nothing but a raging kaiju monster? Okay, that sounds pretty cool on paper and it has this, it has this moment but it lacks what makes Cell so cool. Here's hoping something can happen in Otherworld, this is my fan theory, in Otherworld, where Cell can somehow absorb Cell Max as he gets his body for something, gain a new power up and break out or something and bring the real Cell back. He deserves a true return and not this conceptually cool, but disappointingly fleshed out version. It's nice that they went with the second form callback look though, and he's kind of strong for no discernible reason, but lots of things happen like that and I appreciate the idea 
I just was hoping for a little more. Gohan Beast, or Beast Gohan, that new transformation he has, feels both awesome and just a little stale. Kind of like eating your favorite flavored chips after a long time, and then you find out they're slightly past the expiration. For decades, people have talked about how wasted Gohan is and how Super didn't do him any favors. So it's nice to see, but manipulating Gohan into, into it felt like a bit of a cheat move by Piccolo, but maybe that's in character. It does lead to a very emotional moment where Gohan explodes in anger at seeing Piccolo near death, achieving this new transformation and utilizing his adoptive father's signature classic move, Special Beam Cannon. I got chills and the new form looks awesome. But what is it? Outside of the movie, Toriyama has said that it's an evolution of his ultimate and awakened states. But what does that mean? The movie doesn't offer much in the way of answers, so we're left to go on visuals alone, just like with Super Saiyan Blue, or Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan. I guess that kind of explains it. I presume to think like that form, it combines Gohan's ultimate mystical potential form with the might of his Super Saiyan 2 transformation. I say that as the aura of his ultimate mystic state is the color of his hair, which is also reminiscent of his the shape of his Super Saiyan 2 hair, just taller. The red eyes are a cool addition, almost like there's some of that Uzaru mixed blood power uh, thrown in. But he beats Cell Max so easily after such a huge buildup. However, the special beam cannon moment is executed so well and it looks fantastic that the animation stand out. A throwaway piece of dialogue from Piccolo about it would have done wonders to help explain it, as they did for his. I guess we'll get to that later on in the series coming up. Who knows? But my boy Piccolo, one of the best characters, gets his way over long due more than anyone. Gohan may have been as assassinated power-wise for a long time, but at least he was in character pursuing his passions and he always came back eventually. Piccolo has been pushed to, to the irrelevant side for so long, he couldn't even help in Broly or really anything in Super. So the fact he gets two transformations here is just incredible. He tends to cheat using power-ups, but it's always tied to his roots as a Namekian like the Saiyans with their heritage. King Piccolo used the Dragon Balls that are created by his people to bring back his youthful strength, and he made a stronger child with all of his essence and memories of reincarnation, the Piccolo we know, who trains non-stop and got even stronger on his own. But then he fuses with Nail, another powerful Namekian, giving a big boost, and then becoming whole and one again with Kami, again brings his true self back out. He gets stronger and stronger and stronger due to his heritage. We hear about his training over time, but like Gohan, ironically, we never see his full potential. So in this movie, having him realize that and go to Dende, who's great to see again, for the hidden potential unlock ability that Krillin and Gohan got on Namek, twice if you count Gohan's ultimate form, is absolutely genius. Dende upgrading Shinron to do it for him is smart as well. But if they can just upgrade Shinron whenever they want, why don't they do that all the time? It's dumb Piccolo wastes the other two witches and I grow tired of Bulma's cosmetic upgrades with them. It's just, it's that humor that just adult, doesn't always land well. It's a nice note to think she's always recovering the Dragon Balls with a team that's full time, but the fact that both couldn't think of anything better is kind of whack. Dende even mentioned they could wish the Red Ribbon Army away which opens dangerous opportunities for past conflicts because they did that with Broly. I suppose they could have sent all away but the androids can come back considering their strength and Shinron can't outmatch someone stronger than him. But that's a deus ex machina they have to be very very careful with and I hope they can find a lore reason as to not do that other than Piccolo's pride. But Piccolo gets his yellow state not called yellow <laughs> but called potential unleashed. It's really cool. But Shinron, recognizing his boy Kami slash Piccolo slash a Namekian, gives him all he has and a little extra when he powers him up. Now this extra is not explained. An insignia that looks like the Ochiha clan from Naruto shows up on his back, which I read later is the Namekian sign of pride, symbolizing the dragon and one of the Namekian trees and the planet and the people and all that. But how are we supposed to know this? Because it's not in the movie. You see it, but they don't they don't explain anything. I briefly thought he awakened some of the demon power he once held, given the, how it looks when he transforms. Maybe that was impossible given his history and it could be part of the uniqueness of Piccolo. But given what we know from what was said outside the film and what's in the film, it seems to be unique to the Namekian race's connection with the Eternal Dragons. Something that only Piccolo can get, but only because of that connection, as Shinron recognizes the connection he has with the Namekian, so he does something extra and forms a connection there. In one way, I wish he could achieve it on his own, but it's also really cool. It's possible that it manifests even more because of the once demonic power he had, but it's also been said in DBZ his demon energy vanished over time because you must be evil to wield it. So this is better. And so we get Orange Piccolo.
I wish they'd gone with a different name like Meganamic or Meganamikian, as this one sounds whack and on the nose, even if it's part of the joke for Piccolo not being good at naming things. Since Shinron gave it to him and there's a connection there with the insignia, call it the Dragon State, considering the origin. This new form is probably the most dope new form in DBZ since Super Saiyan 4. There's been some other good ones and Gohan's is also awesome, but in some ways it's just an evolution to what we feel like had already been done once before. This feels completely new. It looks incredible and Piccolo uses abilities not used in decades. He's now relevant with more potential than ever before and he looks awesome. It's somewhere between an orange version of the Hulk and Etrigan the Demon from DC Comics with some, with, of course, Piccolo mixed in. When he grows big to fight Cell, I just love that callback to Dragon Ball considering I just finished watching it again. Can we also appreciate Piccolo's undercover portion of the story? A lot of humor there and he's just such a genius and oozes cool factor for doing something like that. He really is the Batman of this universe. I'd be remiss not to finally talk about, guess who? Goku and Vegeta. They are in this movie. They have small roles, but huge roles at the same time. They have a one-on-one -on -one fight and it's awesome to witness. It's a ton of fun and Vegeta's comments about Jiren and how they can evolve their fighting style makes a lot of sense. And Vegeta does it. He beats Goku fair and square. After a long drawn out fight, he actually accomplishes it, making them on equal footing for the first time maybe ever. I love that. It's such a catharsis to finally see after decades of hearing that uh, desire from Vegeta. And to see Broly and Limo, Limo cry over the beauty of it was hilarious. And I completely forgot Broly would be in this, so it made me so happy to see him training, almost snapping, and everyone freaking out, even Beerus. But they're working to help him, and he's happy with that. I want him and Chi Lai to be a thing, but Beerus likes Chi Lai now, but it's weird. I also think Johnny Young Bosch does really well in the role as he did in the Fighters game. Great addition, even if I do miss the old voice from Vic. However, he sounds great though. Ultimately, this is a worthy addition to the franchise, whose experimental and cool looking yet uneven animation and weak villains are saved by nice callbacks, great character moments, and a progressive sense of world building that is a welcome change of pace. It's refreshing and nostalgic, and one of the best times I had at the theater this year. I give Dragon Ball Super, Superhero, four out of five stars. On another note, I saw it in a normal theater the first night, and then this next night, too, I went to a 40X theater, where it's like a theme park ride, the chairs move, they blast air, there's something that punches you in the back to shoot air in your legs and your neck. Ooh, imagine a Dragon Ball fight, but you're in a chair flying around following it. That was pretty wild, and it tried to kill me. Thank you so much for watching and for tuning in for all of these Dragon Ball videos leading up to this. We're not done. We have a few more to go, building up to my fan film, a few more big reviews coming, and some that I'm even going to do more video essays and a deep dive analysis into the character of Broly. Please hit the like button, subscribe for more content coming soon, and remember, Always look for the good.